Hello everybody. What I'd like to do today is to show you the super symmetric model of the universe. As it stands, science doesn't make any sense. We've got quantum mechanics, relativity, we've got the complexities of chemistry and biology and physics, nice simple quantitative parts of reality, and we simply can't fit them together. But let's start with a proof that you must view reality not as something which is going to be explained purely by physics, but as a duality that needs physics and mathematics. Now I'm going to use Kurt Gödel's work. He wrote the incompleteness theorem, which shows that there are certain parts of mathematics which are undecidable. They're incomplete. Now who cares? Well, Stephen Hawkins, he certainly cares. He wrote a paper called Godel and the End of Physics, as if this something that we couldn't trust about mathematics. Mathematics is the only thing that we can all trust. Logic is based upon logic, verified by logic. And he was worried that somehow our logic might be wrong. But what I'm going to show you today is that Godel's work and the incompleteness theorem can be used to put everything back together in one simple super symmetric model. So let's go over here and show you how mathematics can be used to complete physics and physics can be used to complete mathematics. If I look at the energy in the universe, the proton and the electron both have charge. That charge is a tiny little unit of energy, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 of a coulomb which is indistinguishable unless I use aspects of mathematics. And the charge then becomes positive and negative. Well, what does that positive and negative mean? In terms of physics, it doesn't have a meaning. It just means they're different. And I can see that they're symmetrical and opposite. So, if I don't use mathematics, I can't describe physics correctly. It's undecidable. Both my units of energy are identical. Now let's show you the same thing in physics. If I go back to the beginning of the universe, there's nothing there. No things. Things are the material, the matter, the real parts that come out of the nothingness, the energy at the beginning. Now I can break my energy into two parts, energy and mathematics. I use the energy to generate more and more structure, mathematics, and I need a mathematical aspect to zero, which is positive and negative. I can take out of zero positive and negative numbers. Negative energy, which Paul Dirac has already shown us, is space positive energy of elements and matter. And if you put space and matter together, they distort each other. You can't have space behaving just as space. It doesn't behave as space unless I put matter into space. And matter doesn't collect itself together unless I put the space matter into the space. Two things that change and build each other. Now I've got a picture of the nothingness, the energy generating change, or time, or events, by breaking itself into different parts, atomic parts, gravitational parts. It's gravity which is the relationship between space and matter, and atomic relationships between matter and matter. Now, I get here, I get something that I can count count element number one and now I can count the star, I can count the hydrogen, I can't count the space, it's got qualities, not quantity that I can count. Elements make the star, the energy released by making new elements holds the star up, the gravity from the star. It's the same elements causing the gravity, something with different properties at the same time which push those elements together. We see the same entities with different properties and we don't consider that one thing can behave as three different things at the same time. The quark has 
strong nuclear properties, charge and mass. The electron has weak nuclear properties, charge and mass. It's three different things at the same time. And we're going to see that all of the universe can be described as a relationship between the simple parts which come in pairs and the complex parts which come in threes. The first two prime numbers. We know that all of mathematics is built upon prime number theorem. The relationship between the first prime number, which is 2, which is even, symmetrical, and 3, which is asymmetrical, and the difference between them, the force, is 1. It generates one new component. It could be one new star. So I need the physical aspect, the star, the mathematical aspect, one of something I can count. Each new element, one new element. I get more and more and more components in the universe until I get all the positive and negative components adding up to zero. And I cannot decide or distinguish between zero here and zero here unless I have a beam which interacts directly with the same material from which it came and can observe what I've got here and observe everything I see around me and state that we are now here, a zero being verified by a physical component that interacts directly with what is here and can observe it. So I need three parts, mathematics, energy, and a conscious being to complete the incompleteness theorem, which is, shows that mathematics is completed by physics, physics is completed by mathematics, and the third part, the conscious be being, bringing all this into reality. Now, we saw that our supersymmetric model, if we treat space as simply the environment outside the entity, the environment with qualities, the entity with quantities, just the same principle as general relativity, but I'm going to use it again two more times, we see that matter comes in three generations if we say the same thing that space comes in three generations and what happens in the space causes the entity to behave in a particular way the entity causes the space to behave in a particular way and it all comes in pairs so we've got the standard model underneath the periodic table and there are two rows which are correct and we know they are correct because they are predictive and symmetrical I've got two quarks, an up and down quark, with charge. Now I've got a different kind of space, muon space. I get the strange and the charmed quark. And the third kind of space, tau space, the top and bottom quark. So you can see if I take the entity and put it in a different kind of space, I get something different. Now it's always been a problem, why should there be three generations of space? Well, now you can see the answer. I've got three different kinds of space causing three different kinds of behaviour in the entity. And the relationships between the space and the entity gives me three different kinds of forces, which all come in pairs. Electromagnetic, these are all symmetrical. Strong and weak, so this is the atomic forces sitting together with gravity, with its partner, the cosmological constant, which Einstein has already put into his equations to stop the universe collapsing under its own gravity. And what we see is that we can also put the base parts of mathematics in the same pattern, that the real parts, the particles with which we interact directly, show as positive and negative, charged, but positive and negative numbers, real numbers. But I also get odd and even numbers strong and weak, asymmetrical numbers. And the matter, the real parts, and the space shows us relationship between atomic parts and space or gravity, but real parts and imaginary parts of space, parts that we don't interact with directly, but we can see the consequences. So that gives me two more axes on the argand diagram which have odd and even parts of space on odd and even particles, which we call strong and weak nuclear interactions or quantum 
chromodynamics for all the parts come in three little parts. Quantum electrodynamics, all the parts come in two little parts. So there is a unifying table where all the atomic parts and the gravitational parts sit together in the same pattern. And I can continue the table here to show quantum chromodynamics with all the parts coming in threes, the W plus, W minus and the Z bosons, three colored quarks and three colored glue ones. And you can put the rest of the best parts of mathematics in here, but it's a bit too big for my blackboard. So there is a unified set of physics, predictable physics, atomic physics, gravitational physics, sitting together. Now, we've got the unpredictable parts of reality that we need to join to the unified parts of predictable physics. Physics only has entropy, decomposite, energy always running down. But as we see here, if the energy is building more mathematics, which is structure, that can be built up. And that is built up in complexity, which is self-organizing. Chaos, the information is lost. So I can see again that relationship between information, mathematical information, the DNA in the cell, and the energy the cell produces to build the DNA. The DNA builds the cell, which produces the energy. Again, it's the same relationship. So I've got the evolution of molecules and life, and viruses, and chaotic behavior of the weather. That now can just simply add on to the unpredictable parts, the composite parts, the evolution, both underpinned by their own units, the exponential function. That's why you see E, all of physics, chemistry, biology. It's the value of its own rate of change or time. Any event will either be a composite or a decomposite entropy or evolution. I get time in two equal roots. Now that leads me to a little supersymmetric chart here. Now I've left out the strong and weak nuclear interactions here so you can see that space itself for every symmetry there is a corresponding asymmetry. So I've got strong space up here, electromagnetic space, but weak space down here, the gravitational space. And I've got strong on this side, where I've got matter, the quark and the electron. But if I put the same components into the weak side of space, I get radiation, which is much, much weaker than the matter, the amount of energy. So that's E equals mc squared here. I get the photon and the neutrino. So I get, I've got two components here, the electron and the quark, and two different kinds of space, strong space, weak space, strong space, weak space. And I can, if I just swap the components over, they behave as something different. So I get the photon and the neutrino. Mass and charge, but no mass over here. And I get radiation. Behaving comes again in two parts, two parts, a single part, a single part. So that little diagram here just shows the symmetries and asymmetries between matter and space, which previously haven't been taken into account. So I now have a single mathematical expression which has space unquantifiable with qualities put together with matter. Now I've got to have not just space and time, which is the two parts, entropy and evolution, I've got to have space and matter together, because if you don't have space and matter together, you don't get force, you don't get gravity, which is caused by putting them together, you don't get change, you don't get time. So this builds this, and the events here build more of this. So I've got force between space and matter, and you'll see it's complex, so it's not just three dimensions of space. Now, now I can use all the dimensions I've got in mathematics, as many as I want. I need six dimensions here, one, two, three, four, and then the strong and weak space and the strong and weak particles. So I can have six dimensions of mathematics, no problem anymore, and now I can say what left and right, up and down, top and bottom are. They're mathematical vectors in three-dimensional space. Now it's beginning to make sense. So this expression here, 
the asymmetry between space and matter causes gravity, causes change, causes events, causes things to build themselves. That now makes sense. E to the half, I get a little value, 1.648. That's the same as saying the roots of E, entropy and evolution. And I get the same number here. This is the zeta function, the relationship between the prime numbers, and everything here is built on that relationship between 2 and 3. That's the relationship between the prime numbers and the composite numbers they build. I get 1.644, a tiny little difference here, and because they're different, I get a force, a universal force between symmetry and asymmetry, building the universe. So that's it, a logical explanation that puts together Einstein's work with Gödel's work. And mathematics is verified by logic, and Gödel's work on language, Gödel coding, shows that language works in just the same way. Anything by itself has no meaning, that's in quantum mechanics. I must have two parts to everything, and the two parts behave simply, but I need three parts to explain the complex reality we live in. So there we are, a simple, single description of everything, with one single mathematical expression simple enough to write on a t-shirt. Thanks for watching. See you next time.